uh, we are meeting you all on uh, uh, the new year and happy to share some of the updates uh, on the roadmap. And second, we have a few, uh, mem few new members in the chef team. Uh, we would like uh, to introduce them and uh, uh, also uh, uh, hear their thoughts on how, um, uh, what they feel in the first few months and uh, what plans they have uh, in chef for, the, uh, for 2022. Oh, with that, um, let's um, let's get into the session. Uh, uh, as usual, uh, please do ask as many questions that you have. Uh, we, we, we will try and answer them uh, as we go through these things. Uh, and uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, Raisa, the question should be asked in the question section, not in the chat sections, right? Yes, yes. And uh, we have a we have a lot of our team members uh, in the call today. Uh, they will try and answer those questions and wherever uh, possible, we will um, interrupt and we will answer that uh, through the call. And uh, today, although it says roadmap, we wanted to also use this opportunity to uh, introduce some of the uh, uh, team members and also talk through uh, some of the initiatives that we are working on. Uh, in, in call today, uh, um, I, I'll, I'm Prashant, I had the uh, product management function uh, for Chef business unit under uh, Procris. And along with me, uh, we have Tim. Uh, he heads the product management for Infra, uh, Chef Infrastructure product. And we also have Trevor, who leads both uh, Chef Infra and app delivery uh, product uh, responsibilities. Uh, Chef Trevor uh, and, uh, uh, sorry, Tim and uh, Sudarshan reporting to uh, Trevor. We also have uh, Sharon, who leads uh, compliance. Uh, uh, security and compliance initiative. Lokesh works very closely with him on the Chef Compliance product. Uh, we also have Mark, uh, who is the lead product manager for Chef SaaS, which is currently in the beta. Um, uh, Mark is part of the Chef platform team, uh, which is led by Nissil, where Rankur and Chaitra also work along uh, uh, with them. Um, and uh, we also have Shuba, who has joined us a couple of uh, months ago. She heads the product operations, which has uh, program management and data analytics. And Mark, uh, some of you have interacted. Uh, he leads the user experience team. Uh, before we get into the roadmap, I'm really glad to introduce Aaron. Uh, he has joined us uh, three months ago, and uh, he has joined us as VP Engineering. He leads uh, our engineering effort. Uh, I'll stop here and ask, uh, request Aaron to introduce himself and uh, his teams and share some thoughts on uh, how 2021 has been and uh, what he is thinking about 2022. That sounds great. Thanks, Prashant. I appreciate it. Uh, nice to meet everybody. Um, I'm very excited to be able to be here uh, with Chef, with everybody in the community uh, to talk about these things. Um, uh, my name is Aaron Kraft. Uh, I come to Chef uh, to progress uh, with probably about 25 years of background in software engineering. Uh, over the last um, you know decade or so, I've had the opportunity to work in some larger enterprises, which has uh, given me the opportunity to see what uh, DevOps um, at enterprise scale looks like, which has its own unique uh, challenges. Many of you are probably uh, dealing with some of those uh, types of things. Uh, the team, the, the leadership team here for the um, engineering group uh, has uh, a wonderful mixture of long time, you know, uh, chef experience uh, like Brian McClellan and Seth uh, Chismore. Uh, we have some uh, new leaders as well, uh, like uh, Garija and Vivek, uh, helping to lead security and compliance and platform. Uh, Brian Loomis, I believe, is uh, on the call here. Uh, he is a new addition who has uh, a couple months on me. I'm two and a half, three months in, and, and Brian's probably getting closer to six months uh, leading up our architectural efforts. Uh, Brian, do you want to say a quick hello? Yes, if I can get off mute, sorry. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Brian Loomis, uh, I'm our chief architect for the Chef products all up. Um, so uh, just uh, I started in September, so working on a lot of our new initiatives. We're going to talk about some of those uh, probably today and then over the over the months ahead. Um, but uh, my background is actually across a lot of different platforms and uh, very heavy in the container space and um, more from the application development side. And, and so I think you'll probably expect a lot of things in the build area and a lot of the uh, uh, sort of the platform building uh, side of things, which is an area we have a, we've uh, sort of come back to focus on here within Chef. So happy to be on the team and uh, yeah. Um, I, I wish it were six months. I don't think it's quite six months yet. But Not yet, okay. Well, <laughs> it seems you, like it, right? So yeah, <laughs> we got a lot of right. stuff. That's right, we've packed a lot in. That's yep. great. Um, thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. Um, yep. You can go to the next slide, Prashant, uh, if you want. Um, here's just a few numbers about 2021 uh, as we're wrapping up here. Um, 
you know, these numbers, you know, represent uh, some significant increases over, you know, prior years in terms of uh, product releases, code commits, and um, various different ideas um, that not only came in, but also, you know, shipped out. And so we hope to see these numbers uh, continue to trend up. Um, there's a lot of things that we uh, want to do uh, to you know, improve, um, you know, our efficiency um, uh, as we deliver um, and also, you know, decrease, you know, the, the number of bugs that are um, getting reported back to us, uh, catching things earlier. Um, uh, chef left, um, you know, uh, with uh, identifying the quality issues earlier on. Uh, the next slide uh, shows a few more numbers um, that uh, differences between 2021 and 2020. Um, I don't get to take a lot of credit for this because I wasn't here until the very end of 2021, but um, a 17% increase in product releases, a 30% increase in ideas shipped, and a 46% increase in customer bug closure rates. And so, um, again, we'd like to see those numbers uh, continue to uh, go up. Um, the next slide uh, is uh, just to give you a little bit of a flavor about how we're investing, um, you know, our, our resources in various different areas. Um, you can see a number of teams here that have been added net new. Um, we've added a new infrastructure packages team, you know, to work on being able to keep up and produce uh, more of those infra packages, um, you know, more quickly. Uh, there's there's so many different platforms that we support, and we want to make sure that we're doing that. Community tools, um, you know, I think that's been a success adding that team. Uh, so that we can have some dedicated resources focusing on some of those tools um, that uh, hopefully help you uh, in the community, SaaS team and acceleration team, Brian's architecture team. We've also significantly expanded out the compliance team uh, so that we can continue to uh, get all of the content out there uh, around CIS benchmarks and stigging, um, as well as um, the remediation uh, uh, content that we're producing. So uh, some of the areas where new additions, um, new staff uh, have been included to help us go faster and produce more value for all of you. The next slide um, just talks about four uh, themes. Um, these are themes that uh, a lot of you probably have in your own organizations, um, but these are things that we're uh, targeting uh, very specifically. And we have um, uh, some OKRs uh, that we are using to drive, um, you know, speed to market, uh, higher quality. You know, we want to measure, you know, confidence, uh, your confidence, you know, in the things that we're producing. Uh, we want to see how much more value we can produce um, so that it's not just a matter of uh, getting more work out there, um, but uh, things that are actually impactful uh, for you as you use our uh, our products. And then we want to continue to uh, enrich the culture here. We have a great history. We've got a great background, uh, innovative roots, um, but there's probably more things that we can do to introduce, um, you know, cutting edge uh, approaches to things uh, that uh, weren't you know, around 11 years ago when, when Chef was getting started. So those are some of the, the big, um, you know, objectives that we have uh, for 2022 from an engineering perspective. So Prashant, uh, kick it back over to you. Hey, um, there is a question uh, from Dan before oh, yeah. we jump to the next one. Um, he's asking one of the big things I've seen over the last few months is raising a number of uh, release a package, uh, release a fix for the uh, package things. Uh, seems like the queue might be a bit of lacking. Yeah, I think that, you know, um, uh, post acquisition, um, you know, there was, um, you know, a lot of turnover, um, as you all are probably aware, and um, there were some things uh, that ended up changing uh, in, in terms of the, you know, the overall process. And so um, we definitely have seen uh, some areas where we need to um, get on top of that. Uh, and and we've, we've already put some some new process in place uh, to try to ensure um, that, uh, those, that, that that does not continue to trend uh, in a negative direction, but uh, definitely something that we're, uh, we're aware of and, and we're addressing head on. Uh, Brian, was there something you wanted to add as well to this? Oh, no, I'm just going to uh, just pile on to what Aaron was saying there, too. And I think uh, we've had a lot of changes over the last year. And I think we, we've identified as part of this, uh, these initiatives that Aaron has out here, uh, QA is a very solid focus area. And what we're doing is transforming our QA processes from, I would say, individual products up to the whole portfolio level. So we're, we're talking a lot more about patterns and we're really trying to get our arms around all the different ways that our, our toolkit is deployed. Deployed and shifting left on that. And, and that does involve a lot of focus on the QA area. So totally understand the, the comment. And um, it's an area that we're working hard on right now to try and make sure yeah. that uh, we're not in sort of a break fix type scenario and, and that kind of thing that we have much more reliable uh, delivery of, of uh, value here. So 
Yeah. I just want to pile on what part... Aaron was saying. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And no, no, yep. you inspired me to, to say something there. You know, as part of that, we recognize that we need a um, more robust um, automated regression testing and integration testing. And so um, that is a significant focus uh, for um, FY22 uh, for the engineering team is to uh, increase, um, you know, the, the, the test cases that we have there and to be able to identify them at the various different levels of um, SDLC, including uh, the integrated testing. So um, we hope by um, this time next year when we're having this look at um, 23 uh, roadmaps um, that uh, you'll have seen a, a significant improvement uh, on those um, release fixes for packages. Dan, I hope that helps um, with uh, uh, a little bit more insight into that. Thanks, Adam and Brian. Um, again, uh, uh, keep, uh, keep the questions coming. We'll try and answer whenever possible. Uh, with that, let me shift gears a bit and uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, some of the highlights that we had in 2021. Uh, like, like you saw, we had, uh, like you uh, saw with Aaron sharing some of the numbers, we, we had a good momentum. And uh, we also kind of thought early on in the year on how we should uh, think about uh, 2021, uh, uh, what we are going to, uh, where we are going to invest and how we are going to deliver value uh, to our customers and uh, community users. So when we think about that, we thought about uh, three major product themes, uh, which is easy to uh, adopt and use and uh, build out a unified experience and increased focus on security and compliance. Consequently, um, our, uh, our deliver, the value that we have delivered is uh, around uh, these themes. Uh, in, uh, in easy to adopt and use, uh, we have uh, updated, we have made substantial increase in uh, uh, documentation and also we have increased uh, the coverage with respect to certified compliance content CIS and STIG and uh, there has been a uh, good number of uh, improvements that were launched in both uh, infra and few other products as well uh, uh, and uh, we also made uh, notifications available through uh, Chef Habitat Builder which makes it easy uh, for you to know what is the impact and uh, there, uh, there were two significantly big lift in this segment. One is on uh, making our products available to uh, marketplaces, AWS and Azure. Uh, this will not just help uh, uh, developers or uh, uh, users to try it out easily through marketplace within a few clicks, but also makes it easy for uh, making buying decisions. So with this, uh, uh, companies will have flexibility to consume our product through your AWS and Azure uh, budget. So if you, uh, if, uh, and this, this makes it uh, convenient if there is a technical decision that has been made to go ahead with Chef product, but uh, there is a financial or uh, uh, a procurement decision that, that needs uh, to be made. In that scenario, this helps really well, where uh, uh, you can continue, uh, you can go ahead and make the purchase through AWS console or Azure console directly. And we also launched a, a SaaS beta uh, through which uh, we believe a lot of our uh, customers uh, and even potential uh, new users can benefit because with this, they, uh, we are eliminating the need of uh, installing and managing Chef software. We will do on behalf of you. And also we will be seamlessly delivering updates of our software, making sure that uh, things are on the latest and all uh, the patching and uh, uh, bug fixes that will happen seamlessly without you having to uh, worry about it. All you have to focus on is uh, uh, build best practices, be best cookbooks for you to earn best compliance content for you to manage your infrastructure. And switching into unified experience, I think this is something that is very, very important. And uh, this we started last year and we will continue uh, through 2022 as well. Uh, the intent here is to, you know, we, we have a whole lot of tools that, uh, that, are, uh, that, that are within the Chef umbrella. Uh, we want to provide a unified experience uh, when you use tool A, tool B, tool C. Right? For example, if you start your journey with Chef Infra, uh, transitioning into Chef Compliance should be fairly straightforward. Right? And uh, similarly, if you had started using uh, uh, Inspect Content uh, to scan resources for compliance, uh, you should be able to apply remediation on that uh, fairly straightforward. And if you are using uh, content in your uh, in supermarket, and if you have some cookbooks that you have built and managing within uh, Automate, then you should be able to integrate with them. So all of these things are something that we are uh, looking at. 
and uh, we have made some uh, 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 some progress in 2021 and you will see a little bit of uh, uh, this journey continuing in 2020 uh, too as well uh, some some things to call out for is uh, improved cloud and container support we added a ton of support for the platforms listed there uh, we also extended the platform so that you get kind of seamless uh, experience across uh, uh, windows linux uh, and mac as well and uh, we uh, we recognize that many of you are using uh, uh, Apple. So we got in uh, uh, Mac native M1 support. And the biggest here uh, in this is bringing infra server and policy views within Automate. Right? Many of the uh, Automate users uh, always had the feedback that, hey, I can't manage infra server and nodes through Automate because uh, those, those entities are not even visible, let alone uh, uh, control them. So, uh, and add to that, uh, Chef Manage has been uh, end of life and the end of life is coming uh, end of this year, December 31st, 2022. And we wanted to make sure that we give a very clear transition path for customers for using uh, Chef Manage. So there were many reasons that we had to bring uh, infra server capabilities uh, into Automate. Uh, so we have, we have started, we have, we have got most of the features uh, that was there in Chef Manage that we know of into Automate. And we are also adding many more things that was not there uh, in Automate, but it will help you um, I, uh, seamlessly use configuration management along with um, uh, compliance and also even app delivery. Right? And um, another big uh, 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 release that we did last year was data feed. This was under a, a beta uh, feature and only for uh, one or two connectors. But now we have made it GA and uh, we have tested this against uh, large uh, customers who have uh, 300 to 400,000 nodes. And uh, this works uh, very well. Uh, it gives you flexibility to actually export uh, the data from Automate onto a system of record of uh, your choice. That way you can build out, uh, CMDB is one of the most popular choices because there are compliance needs uh, to tell which are the, uh, what are the infrastructure that you maintain and uh, which is getting audited. Similarly, uh, you might use a bunch of other tools within your organization. If you want to build in, uh, actionable insights across the tool chain, this again gives a wonderful opportunity to export the data and uh, build out those insights. And uh, uh, the last one is around habitat uh, resources capability within in, uh, uh, to, to manage your client. Right? And uh, the, next, uh, key, the next in this theme is security and compliance. Uh, of course, we had launched a compliance product last year. Uh, and uh, we have got a lot of traction, but we wanted to make sure that we increase our focus, uh, not just on compliance, but also on the security. And this starts at two levels. One is to making our products uh, secure out of the box, and also make sure that we enable our customers to use, uh, the pro use our products to uh, maintain a constant uh, uh, secure posture and compliant posture of their infrastructure. In that effort, uh, we have launched uh, Secrets Management, a beta integration with the uh, most popular uh, Secrets Management tool. We have also expanded uh, compliance capability, uh, including waivers and added a bunch of other content, uh, both in terms of uh, for managing private data center uh, or for private cloud resources, as well as uh, public cloud resources. Uh, there has been a in, improved, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, increased focus on uh, the uh, cloud resource pack, which will help you maintain continuous compliance posture for your cloud uh, resources, and that that, uh, that we will continue in 2022 as well. In addition to that, we want we we recognize that uh, uh, content is not just one-time activity. We got to make sure that whatever content, premium content that we build out, needs to be maintained. So we have published SLA, and we will be maintaining that as per that SLA. Uh, we have also improved the FIP support uh, on some of the packages that we have released. Uh, we have also made our uh, product uh, uh, secure out of the box by um, uh, hardening the default settings and also uh, improving uh, 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 or uh, making sure that the, uh, we use the latest packages where there isn't any known vulnerability. Um, and again, here, the biggest one has been uh, the policy as code. Um, this has, uh, this has, in fact, brought all the three themes together, right? Uh, the ease of use, unified experience, and security and uh, compliance. This has got all of these things uh, together to deliver uh, uh, this policy as code experience. When we talk about policies, uh, companies, uh, organizations have different kind of policies. It could be uh, to govern their businesses. 
right? It could be around compliance, it could be security, it could be cost, it could be uh, running, you know, utilizing different tools within the organization. And typically these are written in PDF text and uh, different formats, which are uh, maybe easy to read for, for a specific team, but really, really hard to collaborate. The way we think about it is um, uh, you codify all the policies in a humanly readable code. And this gives you two advantage. One, it makes it easy for you to uh, uh, collaborate because code is understood consistently across uh, different consumers. And the moment it is uh, converted into code, you can apply different uh, software development lifecycle principles on this uh, testing, uh, pu putting in uh, staging and validating and then promoting. Right, um, I, and then this also gives uh, uh, gives you advantage of having everything under one tool, uh, which is uh, the uh, the chef suite, through which you can uh, uh, which you can uh, create your policy, validate your policy, and roll out your policy in a seamless way. Um, this is something which is unique, and what we have done uh, in in uh, 2021. Uh, is a first step, uh, first step towards that, where we have made infra. Uh, uh, where, I mean, among many things, what we have done, a uh, uh, couple of things that we have done is we have made, uh, we have released the compliance phase release, where through your infra client you can run compliance also, and we have also created some uh, framework through which you can in introduce different kind of codified policies, which can be run uh, through the compliance phase. Um, with that, let's switch gears a bit and uh, look at what we have in uh, 2022 uh, again uh, this should not be a, uh, this should not be a surprise because we saw uh, uh, you know our focus in 2021 was uh, ease of use uh, unified experience and uh, uh, security and compliance we are continuing on the same theme and uh, start, uh, trying to complete some of the uh, initiatives that we started and bring it to a broader audience and also kickstart uh, some net new initiatives as we enter into 2021. I'll request uh, Trevor to come in and uh, uh, talk through this section. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> yeah, so as Prashant mentioned, we've got our three main areas of focus, ease, ease of adoption and usage, a unified experience, and focusing on security and compliance. So we're gonna dive deeply in, well, not super deeply, we're gonna go into each of these a little bit as we go through our different product areas, but the highlights, we're focusing on delivering our SaaS this year is one of our, our big initiatives. We're continuing to expand those marketplace integrations. There was a question in the chat about uh, GCP support. We are investigating support for GCP, uh, as well as a couple other cloud vendors. Um, looking at bringing in REST management in Infra so that we can use uh, targets against REST APIs, expanding our workstation wizard capabilities to make things easier to use. We're continuing our path towards Automate HA availability. So we're seeing that continue along so that we can uh, get folks into a more stable state there on uh, AWS bill hosted builds. We're centralizing our user management experience. So instead of having to have a set of users for your chef, your chef infra server and your automate server, you can have a shared set of users so that it's an easier tool team, two set of tools to manage. Uh, we're also continuing to expand our capabilities to manage the delivery of our premium content out to teams. Uh, and in the world of security and compliance, continuing to expand on our compliance reporting capabilities, expanding our content library to include Kubernetes and Docker, uh, continuing to fit ourselves into the space of Kubernetes and Docker in containers to make sure that we're providing folks the best of breed and capabilities and managing those systems, and um, adding some support for the latest versions of Elasticsearch and PostgreSQL to make sure that we've got really got everything uh, covered from the, the CVEs that have emerged in the past few weeks um, and making sure everybody is safe and secure. So with that, we'll oh, go a little if bit. I, if I can make a quick remark um, before we get into the details, I think the next few slides, we are going to uh, go in specifics of what you can expect within each of our product portfolio. It will be great to hear uh, if you, uh, if you are, able to, you know, if this is uh, aligned with uh, your um, your organizations or your uh, team's uh, interest and uh, roadmap, 
uh, if you are not able to see something that you are anticipating please ask us uh, uh, we will we will we will try to understand how um, that will be useful for you and uh, as we navigate through uh, the 2022 we will figure out how we can take in that request and uh, work with you to make uh, uh, to help uh, so that you can influence our roadmap and also we can help uh, 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 you to be successful with a uh, chef product. And uh, just briefly, I'll, I'll just say, um, you know, I'll put my email address in the chat. You probably can see it in the invites, but um, um, I would love to speak to anybody, you know, who, um, you know, has feedback for us, um, you know, about your needs, about your particular circumstances. So we can think about from an engineering perspective, um, you know, how, how to better meet those needs. So. Thanks. Um, uh, go ahead, uh, Trevor, please continue. All right, let's move on into infra management. All right, so for 2022, we've got some, some different focus areas again throughout here. So we're really bringing out more capabilities in terms of operating system support, making sure that we've got things supported across both infra client and workstation. So you see here uh, support for M1 native and workstation, some more operating systems coming out as new OSs are rolling out into the world. Continuing to enhance things like supermarket to make sure that you have a better understanding of what your code quality looks like in your cookbooks. Uh, adding more security integrations for uh, infra clients, so making sure that you can migrate to MTLS for infra. Um, that shared login experience, so making sure that you can log in using your Automate SAML in your, uh, your Chef infra client work. Um, <clears throat> adding that target mode capability so that you can utilize and manage things that are exposed via REST APIs that can't have an agent run on them. Uh, continuing to expand on features so that you can manage things like client certificates in uh, native certificate locations like the Windows Search Store. Um, and continuing to uh, expand our, our resource coverage so that it's easier for things to manage. Uh, I think probably one of the most exciting things we're going to be working on this year, if you want to go forward, Prashant, is that REST API management capability. So we're working on making it so that it is easy to uh, target things that are exposed via REST APIs, things that you can't install a, a, a chef client on that you need to manage remotely. The most common scenario we're seeing in this is network and security device management um, and making it easy for you to have that whole infra experience that you're familiar with today including being able to view these things as nodes in uh, infra server and reports and automate, as well as their, uh, their uh, property data like you would see in OHI today, uh, and make it so that we can extend our compliance capabilities to include these remote targets as well. Uh, and for this, we're targeting for an initial beta coming towards the end of half one. Um, you can see here a sample of what some of that code might look like. Um, of course, this is tentative and subject to change. This is early days here. Uh, we also talked a little bit about uh, workstation and adding some more wizard capabilities and enhancing the UI in uh, workstation. So <clears throat> here we're looking at uh, a whole graphical interface so that you can set up workstation and have it connect into your infra server and automate server without having to go manage all the configuration files you would traditionally have to set up and, and run with. Uh, those will obviously still exist, but make that whole setup experience simpler and easier so that you can get the value that you need to and start actually delivering content and quality to your policy systems uh, faster than ever. Uh, Aaron, did you want to jump in there? It looks like you, uh, you're ready to jump in on here. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, the overall UI, um, you know, pieces of our, our product uh, is definitely a major focus for uh, 2022 uh, to uh, make things uh, much easier to use. Uh, so, you know, you still have access, you know, at an API level, at a CLI level, uh, but um, uh, bringing things together like what we're doing with Workstation, um, uh, we hope will uh, make our products much more enjoyable um, and, uh, and, and uh, speed to uh, value on those things. Uh, and this is another area where we would love to hear uh, from you. Uh, if you had faced uh, 
sorry, maybe that's what I, I stole what you were going to say, Trevor, I'll let you continue. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Uh, I mean, you all can see kind of we're, we're all very excited about this, you know, Aaron, Aaron's jumping in here on video ready to talk about like the, the work we're, we're trying to bring to make our stuff easier. Really, the those product themes we talk about are something that we're all very focused and passionate about. Um, so yes, anything you see through this entire presentation, if you have questions or feedback, please, please reach out to us and, and talk to us. Helps us uh, helps us make these things better, not only for us but for everybody who uses them as well. Um, so, with that, let's talk a little bit about app delivery. Uh, so, we're also working on bringing high availability capabilities to Builder. So, for those of you who are using app delivery and are managing uh, your own internal Builder instances, we're adding high availability capabilities into there. We're working on making it easier to see uh, the generation and uh, the build order that you have for your packages by looking into the dependency graph and making that more easily available. We're also working on our next package refresh. We got our, our first one in a, in a year or so out in uh, October. Uh, I was very excited to see that get released with all those uh, packages in core and base plans uh, up to date. Uh, we're already working on the next one and we're continuing to work on making that process smoother, faster, so that everybody's getting the latest and greatest packages as quickly as possible. Um, with that, let's hop on over to desktop. So in our world of desktop, desktop is our tool that we, we, we've kind of launched about a year and a half ago to make it easier for folks to do that endpoint management on things like desktop or kiosk systems. Um, we're continuing to expand on and add our, uh, our MDM integration with desktop so that it's easier to manage things in Mac OS uh, using infra, which includes adding support for both Big Sur and Monterey. Uh, so that there's uh, uh, the premium content available that we had for some of the earlier oh, Mac OS systems we have available going forward uh, as well. And then continuing to improve on those Mac OS resources. We have a lot of customers in desktop who are very closely managing their Mac OS systems for their fleet uh, and, and making sure that we've got these capabilities is, is really key to making our customers successful here. Uh, Prashant, it looks like you're ready to jump in. Um, I, I wanted to call out one pattern that we are seeing uh, uh, quite frequently uh, in the land of desktop is uh, like more and more we are we are talking to uh, many of the chef users and even sometimes uh, previously uh, you know some chef users uh, practitioners who have gone into another organization but um, they are familiar with chef they are reaching out to us uh, asking how we can help them manage. Linux um, desktop and laptop fleets. Uh, and we have found a particularly um, good pattern which has been, uh, we, which we have deployed and uh, have helped a few organizations, including Progress internally. Uh, in Progress, as we start, uh, uh, we, uh, as we, uh, we completed an acquisition and uh, some of the users there uh, are, are using Linux desktop. So we have found this uh, interesting pattern where um, Chef Desktop can be uh, very easily deployed and it will help you bring uh, your laptop and desktop uh, fleet under uh, management. So this is something uh, uh, which our customers actually discovered and we have learned and we have made some tweaks to make it uh, much, much more uh, useful. So if any of you are interested to learn about it, uh, we are happy to talk uh, to you and uh, 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 you know share some of the best practices that are there and share how uh, to use that pattern uh, to bring uh, the desktop and laptops uh, which are using the next uh, not just Mac and Windows which has been all which has been where which has been it has been used already but even for Linux how we can bring it under management. All right. With that, let's talk about the place where we tie everything together. Let's talk a little bit about the Chef platform and automate. So big focus is here. Again, we're, we're working closely with our teams to get our SaaS MVP rolling. We've got a few customers in there already from a, from a beta perspective. We're looking to get to that MVP um, pretty quickly. And we'll have Mark talk a little bit about where we're at with that in a little while. 
continuing to get uh, automate HA out there so that we can get folks off of backend as we end of life it and bring folks over. Um, pulling all of the different threads we have together, we're seeing that enhanced capabilities from seeing what's coming out of your infra server directly in the platform and automate. Um, bringing that uh, user management experience together so that you have a, a single set of users that you need to manage your policy fleet through automate and our different areas in our tooling. Uh, continuing to expand on our capabilities and reporting and making so that making it so that you have better insights into what's going on in your fleet of systems and your policy deployments. Um, and making sure that you can get the content that we provide even easier directly in automate. Uh, also expanding, again, working on um, larger compliance scans so that you can uh, pull data in that's of a larger size. We've got a few customers who have pretty big reporting needs and pretty uh, complex uh, policy for their compliance that they're pulling in. So making sure that we can pull all of that content into Automate is important. And then of course, working on pulling in and tackling some of the, the tech debt and taking care of some of those uh, recently exposed uh, CVEs uh, in things like Postgres and other tools so that uh, everybody has a very safe and secure experience. Oh, we have lost Prashant. So with that, hold on one moment. So some changes are coming down the pipe. Um, <clears throat> We've got a couple end of life dates. Uh, these have been announced previously, but just to reiterate them, uh, December, 30, December 31st, 2022, we will be end of lifing Chef Manage and we will be end of lifing Chef Backend. Uh, so we're moving the capabilities that you had in Manage into Automate and we are moving the capabilities you had in Backend into Automate's HA capabilities. Uh, if you have any kind of questions about uh, any of these end of lives, please reach out to uh, Viv uh, Vivek Kumar or Ankur uh, on the community Slack, and we can help talk about how we can help you get migrated off of those and make sure that you're going to have a seamless experience as these uh, end of lives come down the pipe. Raisa, um, would, would you mind uh, launching the poll here, though? Uh, and if any of you uh, think that we can help you, uh, or you need more information uh, about these things, um, either about Chef Manage or how to migrate off of uh, Chef back into A2HA. Uh, and if you would like uh, us to get in touch with you, uh, please do respond uh, to this poll. And based on that, um, our product and engineering team will be more than happy to get in touch with you and uh, talk to you more. Awesome. All right. With that, Mark, do you want to talk a little bit about the SaaS beta? Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Trevor. So right now we are currently in beta with our SaaS product. Um, we are continuing to work on getting to our final, uh, our, well, our, our initial offering of what we will eventually have for SaaS. But we do have uh, betas available for those customers that would like to uh, evaluate what it is that we're building, be able to help us with moving our product uh, into the future. And some of the benefits and the highlights that we want to pull out and, and talk about there is the ability for those folks that uh, would like to remove that need to install Chef, manage Chef, uh, do, the, do the updates and upgrades of Chef. This is a good opportunity for people to start taking a look at that, see what it would mean for them. Uh, of course, everything that we're building when we're talking about the SaaS is the is the ability to move the product into the future as well. Um, not just what we have with Automate today, but also thinking about what are cloud-based concerns that customers have today uh, that uh, we can start taking a look at for the future. Of course, it will have all of our latest and greatest products into there, anywhere from uh, compliance to desktop. All of that will be built into what we have with our final product and is built into our betas today. For those folks that wanted to uh, take a look at what we have with beta, uh, maybe kick the tires around and, and take a look at things, feel free to reach out to myself. 
uh, via Slack or the community. We also have the ability of having a preview page um, if you're to go on to Chef as well, where you can also sign up it, it, for there. And we do have a poll question that we'd like everyone to kind of take a moment and fill out um, and see whether or not you would be interested in taking a look at a little bit more around what we have with the Chef SAS today. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Prashant, do you want to take the screen share back over? No, that's fine. Now uh, you can continue. I don't know. There is some issue. It seems like an issue with internet, like we predicted. <laughs> I was not hoping for it, but it happened nonetheless. Uh, but before we jump to the next section, I uh, I see a question from Brian asking: Will auto correction be available with uh, network and security device management over the REST API? Trevor, Tim, uh, do you want to take a stab at it? Oh, I see. Brian has replied to that now. Yeah, just to kind reiterate. Of Brian's response, yeah. Uh, it's not something that's been entirely sketched out yet. I imagine it's something that we're gonna look closely into. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we'd love to talk to you about kind of what, what you would look for in that and uh, what that experience would look like from your perspective uh, and better understanding of what you're looking for. Yeah, Tim, I'll probably launch Brian. that just a little bit. You know, I think, uh, the initial launch, we're going to look at a very similar experience to what you'd get with Chef Client right now. Um, it's actually the desire is to make it so you can manage these existing uh, security and network devices really the same way you would do with, you know, an instance in the cloud or a server in your data center. And that's going to mean you're going to have the ability to write that compliance code against that, run inspect, uh, and also write infrastructure recipes and resources against those nodes. Uh, so you kind of manage that remediation yourself. Um, where we'd really like to get, and, and we have some definite big ideas, is a better, tighter feedback loop for that that really lets you get into a world where you can do what I, I think you might be suggesting, which is, um, you know, see a problem, fix a problem uh, very easily um, and do that without that kind of long workflow process. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's definitely something we would like to chat about because um, it's something I'm really excited to, to kind of bring to Infra. So uh, we would love to reach out and chat. Thanks, Tim. So, Sharon, do you want to uh, talk uh, a little bit on the compliance part? Sure, sure. Thanks, Prashant. Uh, thanks, Trevor. Um, so, uh, in terms of uh, the Chef compliance, uh, you know, again, going by the you know the same idea of easy to adopt um, and use unified experiences and security and uh, compliance. Um, really, from the easy to adopt and use perspective, um, you know, we are uh, adding a, a lot of additional uh, platform support from the inspect end. Um, like, for example, the big, uh, big Sur Mac OS is one of uh, such additions that we want to make. Uh, we also want to add uh, some of the support for more uh, resources from the inspect end. Uh, you know, support for more operating systems. Um, you know, apps and. Uh, uh, one of the uh, you know additions that we want to make is around the containers and the Docker aspect. Uh, we continue to invest in terms of our cloud resource packs. Um, you know that's been an area that um, you know an ongoing aspect, um, and this really helps you to you know build the custom profiles on top of the resource packs that we built. And this is something that we're doing consistently across uh, AWS, GCP, as well as um, Azure. Um, from the unified uh, experience perspective, one of the thought processes that we came up was uh, uh, today we do have a lot of content with respect to, you know, the CIs and STIG, uh, both from an audit and remediate perspective. Um, uh, but we wanted to really, um, you know, kind of gently provide a seamless access to this, uh, this content uh, from Automate uh, and uh, tie it onto the entitlements that, uh, you know, customers may have. Um, so seamless, uh, you know, delivery of, uh, you know, the premium content from Automate uh, is one of the very, uh, is one of the key aspects that we want to uh, cover in the first half of this year. Um, uh, from a security and compliance perspective, we uh, will continue to keep our, uh, keep updating our existing audit and remediate content, um, you know, as uh, we, we actually had an SLA some, uh, set up sometime last year. And uh, we we will continue to adhere to that SLA. And uh, as soon as the uh, CIs or the stick benchmark providers, you know, they release an updated content, uh, we will uh, you know kind of make continuous updates uh, to our uh, profile so that you know customers can enjoy the latest uh, uh, latest content and uh, keep their uh, you know environment in a compliant uh, state. Uh, we also have a ton of new premium content that we want to introduce, um, and this goes across operating systems, databases, apps. 
And, um, you know, containers and Kubernetes is a new area that we are focusing on. Um, so there won't be a bunch of content that we are going to add uh, for, uh, you know, Docker and uh, some of the Kubernetes, uh, you know, environments. Uh, so that will be a, a, a new addition and a new foray into uh, the Docker and the Kubernetes world. Uh, one of the additional things that we are planning to do from a security and compliance perspective is also, um, you know, we do have a lot of CIS uh, best practices for uh, cloud, uh, but we also want to provide the uh, chef curated best practices. Uh, and this will really uh, be something on top of what existing that we have uh, and customers can actually generally leverage it as part of the custom profiles or, uh, you know, they can kind of generally use some part of these curated profiles uh, based on their organization needs. Um, so that's pretty much about our, uh, you know, highlights in terms of what we want to do in the first half of, uh, uh, you know, this year. Um, and, you know, one of our poll question that we want to uh, address is, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, we'd like to hear more from you in terms of uh, how easy it has been uh, for you to adopt, um, you know, compliance. Uh, is that, um, you know, uh, we just want to know this because this is going to be a very key, uh, critical focus area for us. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, we, we are kind of taking up some steps uh, to kind of uh, help in easy, uh, ease of uh, adoption and usability from a compliance perspective. Um, I'll move on to, uh, you know, the detailed updates with respect to the content roadmap. Um, so we, we have, a, a you know, a bunch of uh, updates and uh, uh, content that are, uh, you know, the new content that, that we want to introduce. Um, you know, close to 32 PIS audit and remediate updates, um, a number of, um, you know, uh, stick updates, uh, both from the audit and uh, remediate perspective. Uh, we're also planning to, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of uh, demarket cloud into a separate section and we are, you know, kind of adding a bunch of updates on, on that particular front as well. Um, in terms of the new premium content, um, you know, we are uh, kind of, uh, you know, planning to support uh, CIs and stick uh, content for, uh, uh, for operating system, some of the newer versions of CentOS, Red Hat Linux, Alma um, Linux is one of the uh, other aspects that we want to introduce. Uh, some of the newer versions of databases like Oracle and uh, Postgres, um, and also uh, you know some of the additional software systems like uh, you know the Microsoft uh, Web Server. Uh, also for uh, you know we want to uh, you know support the newer versions of uh, VMware uh, Hypervisor. Uh, container, uh, you know, uh, container and Kubernetes has been a space, um, and we are planning to upgrade our uh, Docker content. Um, so far, we just have the uh, community. We want to also put into the enterprise version. Uh, we also want to add a couple of content on the enterprise versions. Uh, and from the Kubernetes versions, uh, we are uh, planning to support uh, a couple of, um, you know, CIS versions from the Kubernetes perspective also. Uh, and this, this is, uh, you know, more for the self-managed Kubernetes. Uh, but if customers also have, uh, you know, the Amazon or the GKE-based uh, Kubernetes versions, uh, we are planning to support that as well. Uh, so that will really help us, uh, you know, kind of cover the entire gamut of, uh, uh, you know, the Docker and the Kubernetes um, uh, aspect from a compliance perspective. Um, so moving on, uh, I think uh, into the next slide. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, again, if you would like a, a very detailed call on, um, you know, on the container and the Kubernetes security. Uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to me or, uh, you know, we can, we can also reach out to Girja on Slack and, uh, you know, we'll be happy to get on uh, call with you, uh, you know, help you understand uh, and uh, address any questions you have. Um, also speak a little bit about our solution and strategy uh, around the container and the Kubernetes perspective. Uh, apart from that, uh, even if there are any other questions, uh, you know, where you have, uh, you know, where you would like to have uh, more understanding on uh, you know, access to the content or uh, the new content that we are adding. Uh, if you want to have, uh, you know, uh, if you have a request for any additional content apart from the ones that we have, or, uh, you know, uh, you know, any of the new cloud resource packs that we're introducing, uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to me or Kirja. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, help you with that uh, and answer your question. This is something that we are super excited. Um, I think Tim talked about um, uh, remote management. Uh, and uh, Trevor talked about how we want to make our products easy to use uh, via um, uh, the SaaS and also uh, through Workstation Visual. Um, and SaaS, of course, uh, is, is kind of a platform that we are building through which we can make our products uh, easy to use, easy to adopt, easy to get started even. Um, and this is another 
uh, new initiative which we have we are kicking off in 2022 with sam and uh, our team is super excited about for a couple of reasons one i think uh, we have the right uh, uh, set of tools already and we have also seen some of the community as well as our customers community users and customers pick up these uh, pick up the tools that we have and use it in some specific cases of uh, container and kubernetes compliance and we have uh, we have reason to believe that it can be very well extended into making providing security offerings as well and uh, second um, uh, we have, we have a lot of our customers asking um, uh, how we can help them in their kubernetes and container journey and uh, we feel we can be a great partner to them um, helping them maintaining continuous compliance and security posture. So this, if this is where you are headed uh, and your organization is headed, and if you want to learn uh, on what we are thinking about, what are the initial few things that we are thinking of implementing, uh, we will be happy to um, talk through that. Of course, this is a team we have just uh, gotten started. So it's not gonna be available just tomorrow, uh, but this is a significant, uh, uh, significant big step for us. Uh, so we we'll, we'll want to make sure that we uh, we have a tight focus on how we can deliver incremental and continuous value to all of you. So if if this is something that uh, is interest uh, for you and your teams, uh, do let us know, and we will be happy to hear how what problems you are facing, how we can address, and is there an alignment of our initial um, uh, investment that we are making in this direction uh, towards the problems that we are facing. I guess that brings end uh, uh, to today's session. Uh, I hope this was uh, this preview was uh, interesting and it sparked some thoughts. Uh, we would be happy to uh, uh, keep this conversation going, uh, either through Slack community Slack or uh, uh, through your account managers. You can or CSMs. Feel free to reach out to us. And if you think this was interesting, and if you want to have a deep dive with uh, uh, some, uh, you know, a few, few, a few other team members in your organization, uh, don't hesitate to ask your CSM or account manager. Uh, we will be happy to uh, jump on a call with you and uh, talk um, uh, talk about the specific area that you wanted to understand or uh, had some questions but could not ask today, um, and would like to ask those things and hear our thoughts and give some feedback. Um, Aaron, do you have any closing remarks? No, just um, look forward to continuing the great partnership that we have with everyone. And uh, please give us um, you know, all the feedback that you can so that we can use that to help us uh, shape the direction of um, what we're doing here. So, uh, but thank you for everybody's time today and the uh, interaction. And David, thanks for the follow-up on that. Um, if you don't mind, uh, uh, we, we'll get in touch with you uh, if that's okay, so that we understand uh, uh, what are those needs. And uh, like Trevor said, we are actively investing in other marketplaces as well. GCP is clearly uh, one of them. Um, I, I would love to get uh, Sudarshan, who is the product manager uh, for our marketplace, and uh, uh, have him talk to you and uh, understand your needs. And thanks for uh, saying yes to that. We will get in touch with you. Okay, uh, with that, uh, thanks everyone for your time. Uh, looking forward to more such interactions and uh, have a great rest of the day. Bye. -bye.